I'd always been um, interested in understanding what was going on. I'd always wanted to know the truth of, of, of reality and understand my identity and know who I really was and, and what I was meant to be doing here. And um, this led to me undertaking some quite strange and interesting things throughout my life to try and make sense of what was going on. Um, exploring different practices, reading lots of different books, um, meeting lots of amazing and interesting people. And I knew somehow that there was more to what was going on than the conventional description. And I, it, it always felt to me like there was something that I just wasn't being told. And it was hinted at in all of these books. And I heard talks by people that were talking about you know, something that was beyond or somehow greater than my conventional experience or description of life. And um, the more I read about it and the more I heard people talk about it, the more frustrated I became because um, it, it wasn't my experience. It just wasn't my experience, and, um, and I, <laughs> I, I, I just got more and more frustrated by hearing about other people's experience of, uh, of this sort of unity, of this oneness, and of their, their realizations and recognitions, and it just wasn't my everyday lived experience. And so I decided, I guess, at some point that, well, you know, I'm, I'm just going to give up on all of that because it doesn't seem like there's anybody that will actually show me you know, how I can make this my everyday lived experience. It seemed to me that um, the purpose of my life was to make myself happy. And it seemed to me that from what I could see going on around me and what everybody else was doing, that the way to do that was to cultivate these positive descriptions like happiness, like joy like bliss, and, and to try and have as many of these kinds of experience in my life as possible, and to keep at bay the negative descriptions and the, the negative experiences, so like sadness and loneliness and um, anger, irritation, all of these things seem to be signs that I was doing something wrong. And this led me to lead a life where all of my time and my energy was focused on this basic way of living life that everybody else around me seemed to be doing. So keeping these negative ones at bay and trying to cultivate and work out what I could do in my life to bring about these positive states. And um, I trained in this way of living life very hard and I, I put a lot of time and energy into this and probably like some of you or many of you I got quite skillful at it. You know, I began to work out what it was that made me happy and where the danger of, you know, something that might make me sad lay and, you know, approaching life very carefully and, you know, checking everything out and trying to work out, well, wh which decision and which direction was going to make me feel happy and which were the ones that had this danger of sadness in and I'll, I'll avoid those. And... Um, building up and working out this identity based on these descriptions of what would make me happy and what would make me sad. And it led to life feeling very complicated. I felt very constrained because there were all these things I had to be wary of, I had to be careful about. I couldn't open myself up, I had to be guarded, I had to protect myself in, in social situations, for example. Um, I didn't want people laughing at me. I didn't want people to think I was stupid or um, naive or inexperienced or all, all of these ideas I had. And so when I was in a social situation, you know, it was carefully checking out what was going on, you know, looking and seeing the responses I was getting to what I was saying and you know, then carefully adjusting what I was saying to how I thought that was coming over. And you know, it was just a very uh, tentative way of living. And, um, but I worked really hard at it and I got quite skillful at it. But no matter how skillful I got, the results were always just out of my control. 
So when, no matter how good I got at projecting this sort of confident aura, somebody would say something that would just cut me right down and, would, you know, I'd, and I'd feel like a total failure, a complete social disaster or you know, just want to get the hell out of there and run away and be on my own again because well, I hate people. And, 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 and all of this, this was my, this was my everyday lived experience of life. Not this blissful state of oneness. And so when I came across this training, the, the terminology is actually key to understanding the fundamental nature of my experience. Absolutely key. A simple terminology that allows me to describe and understand all of my experience. So, all of this description, everything that I can experience, all of these ideas, these belief systems, all of these thoughts and emotions, I can simply call data. They're all just data. All of them are known in exactly the same way. There is this opening intelligence, what's looking through your eyes right now, by which you know everything that you have ever known, you know right now and will ever know. It's naturally present, you don't have to do anything to achieve open intelligence. If you simply allow the descriptions just to flow on by for a short moment, you give yourself this opportunity to notice this naturally present intelligence. What's listening through your ears? What's aware of you in this room? It's this intelligence that is the same intelligence that orders everything in the universe, everything in nature. This is your intelligence. Now, I had been trained to use my mind in a particular way, to focus in on all of the descriptions, all of the data, and then to sort them out in these ways that I had been taught, these conventional descriptions. So this is a good experience, this is one I want to be having, so I've got to hold on to that, I need to cultivate more of that. This is a bad one, okay, yeah, I don't like this, this feels uncomfortable, how do I get rid of that, what's the cause of it? And what needs to change so that I can get rid of the negative one and have a positive one? Now this is one way that we can use our minds. And I've just described to you the results I saw in my life of training my mind to be used in this particular way. I felt uncomfortable most of the time. I felt uncomfortable when I was around other people because there was this whole uncertainty about what they were thinking about me. You know, how was I coming across? I felt uncomfortable when I was on my own because then there was loneliness. Then there was sadness. Then there was the desire to be with people. And it was this constant swinging back and forth, never really feeling at ease with where I was in that particular instance. And so to discover that by allowing all of the descriptions just to be exactly as they were for these short moments, this ease that I had been looking for was found to be naturally present. It had been there all along. This intelligence had been looking through my eyes the whole time. I'd simply never acknowledged it. So the power of acknowledging it for these short moments was just, um, first of all, one of incredible relief. Just to see that I was okay how I was. My fundamental okayness and stability did not depend on any of these ever-changing descriptions. And my thoughts and emotions and sensations were always changing. I mean, look at your thoughts now, look at your emotions, look at your physical sensations. Can you hold on to any one description? They're this seamless flow of just complete benefit when allowed to be exactly as they are. There's nothing to be afraid of in any of these descriptions when you allow them just to flow on by because none of them have an independent nature. All of them shine forth equally from open intelligence. All of them are data, this dynamic energy of open intelligence. Now when I began to see this for myself and to see this instinctively and directly through taking these short moments, repeated many times, until it became continuous, then I began to see that I could allow myself to be however I was in all circumstances. 
So when I was with groups of other people and all of the social anxiety came up, all of the ideas and questions about, well, what are people thinking now? You know, how did that come over? You know, what should I say next? Or should I say anything here? Or no, I'm feeling too nervous. All of these thoughts that had previously been the complete focus of my attention and where I'd cho chosen to use and emphasize my intelligence were just allowed to be exactly as they were. And I began to be completely easeful with whatever was arising. And I began to see that most people weren't thinking about me at all. <laughs> oh, good. And when I was on my own and the thoughts of loneliness came up, instead of emphasizing this thought of loneliness, I saw right there I had a choice. I could also allow that thought just to be exactly as it was. I could use it as an opportunity to see whether it too was also data shining forth from open intelligence. And I could check this out for myself just by allowing it to be as it was without spinning off into a story about it. I'm lonely because of this. You know, I'm always on my own. Why can't I find you know, friends or a partner to be with? Oh God, poor me. Instead of spinning off into that story, I can allow that thought just to be exactly as it is and recognize its basis, its essence, as opening intelligence. Directly and instinctively, and that is absolutely key. This cuts all of those stories right at the root, and you discover for yourself what is the basis of your experience. Is opening intelligence always naturally present? Are all of the data continually changing? What is it that you can actually rely on? And when I began to discover this stability within myself, then there was this natural confidence. This confidence of knowing that I could allow everything to be as it was and rely on open intelligence. And that is where I would find this ultimate support. Now the training up in this is key. The introduction is an essential first step, but we have to train up in this. And the training up is what is offered in Balanced View. Because I came across this training, I heard about short moments, and I'm like, this is great. This is excellent. Okay, I've got it now. now wh why would I want you know, anything else? I can, okay, I've got this tool now I can take away. And when I'm on my own, I can allow everything to be as it is for a short moment, identify this open intelligence. And I went away and I tried to do it on my own. And um, I had some excellent success. And there were some times when this open intelligence was just so bright and obvious, illuminating my experience from within. But there were other times when the descriptions just seemed to completely overwhelm me. And it's like, where's it gone? It's gone. You know, I, I had it. I had it five minutes ago, and now it's gone. You know, I don't even know what it is anymore. And just complete overwhelm. And it began to dawn on me that I did need support here. And this was a huge shock for me, because I had been incredibly proud. And proud of my independence, and proud of my strength, and proud of my capacity to sort out my life on my own. And it was a huge step for me to discover this humility of saying, I actually need some support here. But for me, the benefits that I saw in my own experience from testing the training meant that I could see that I really was serious about this. I did not want to live my life the way that I had been living it before because I could see the benefits of relying on open intelligence. This was the most important thing I'd ever come across in my whole life, by far, by a factor of many thousands. And so this was something that I was serious about. And if I was serious about it, then I was prepared to take advantage of any and all support that was offered. And so I came back and I said, you know, how can I be supported? And found that there was this comprehensive support network that would really allow me to train this up as far as I wanted to train it. And that was incredible for me to see and to take advantage of the support and the humility of asking for support and then being open to that support, now I see as a huge strength. Because living this isolated existence based on this idea of me as this separate, you know, proud individual 
was actually one of the things that was making me completely miserable. And allowing that just to be exactly as it was, was such a relief. And now I have more friends than I've ever had in my life. More people that I could call on in times of need than I've ever had in my entire life. More fun than I've ever had in my entire life. More open ease and just complete enjoyment of everything exactly as it is. And this is the result of this training in my life. So the results of these two ways of how I'm going to use my intelligence and my mind are just completely obvious in my practical everyday lived experience. And this recognition, this bright recognition of open intelligence just continues to grow. It shines brighter and brighter and brighter. And there is no limit to how far you can take this. It's up to you. But I've also seen that there is this perfect pace of gaining confidence. And I've begun to trust this perfect pace. There isn't any rush, and there might be that urgency. But that urgency, when a left to be exactly as it is, is also part of this dynamic display of complete beneficial potency. This urgency will be your motivation to continue to train this up, to no longer be a victim to these, these streams of data. You know, you give up your right to be a victim. This is such a powerful and empowered way to live, where your life transforms, and my life has transformed from being one completely obsessed with myself and my ideas about myself, to one that is more and more open, more and more expansive, and more and more lived for the benefit of all, in a completely natural, uncontrived way. And that is the guarantee that you will receive if you decide to enjoy the support of the Four Mainstays.